Do you ever look at someone's content and wonder how they got the views they did? How does a dead channel with almost 9 million subscribers getting 30,000 to 100,000 views a video, unless they have a celebrity or a trending game on their channel, get a video with 23 million views? No other Sims channel, including the official Sims YouTube channel, has ever gotten anywhere near that amount of views. Is this content just that good or is there something else going on? Three things. Fair use exists even if you don't like it, EA owns the Sims and everything made with the game, and don't be an idiot or a jerk. Thank you to all my channel members for their continuing support. 20 exclusive videos in three months, I still can't believe it. I've never seen BuzzFeed's 100 Baby Challenge, and that's by choice. One can only handle so many boring and lazy 100 Baby Challenges before you start avoiding them like they smell. As a family player who thrives on kids growing up well with hobbies, friends, and adventures, watching creators endlessly grind out child skills and trap their kids in the house until they can throw them out, yeah, not my cup of tea. Let's look at the viewer interest for this video. I'd really love to see the watch time for this video because it has to be low. 10%, 20%, maybe 30% if they're lucky? It really shouldn't take you almost three minutes to get into gameplay. You would think companies like BuzzFeed with camera operators, editors, and researchers would know how to make content for YouTube. Maybe this is why they only normally get 50k views with 9 million subscribers. Anyway, if you want to use the big simmers as a not what to do to grow on YouTube tool, don't do this. If people want to read the rules, put them in the description. If people want to watch you make a sim or build a house, point them towards the videos of you doing that. Don't waste your audience's time like this. Oh, oh, he rejected me! Oh no! Oh my god, we only have 97 dollars? Has Chelsea been spending all all of our money at the bar? For someone who plays The Sims a lot, how do you not know that flirting in a group conversation results in failure a lot of the time? How do you not know that Sims at a bar are going to order drinks? I know some people are going to say that's just nitpicking, however you should probably know how the game works after hundreds or thousands of hours of play. It shocks me that the people who do this professionally have no idea how the game works a lot of the time and rely on their audience telling them how to do things. I'm beginning to understand why this episode literally has two scenes people watch, the getting pregnant and the baby being born because everything else is just pointless filler. Do I, as a viewer coming to watch a 100 baby challenge, care about Winterfest? Not really. How about spending time with potential baby daddies to make it easier to have babies later with them? Nope. What about dragging Santa to the gym? Do I even need to answer that? This is going to be a long, boring challenge if this is the quality of the episodes. I did find it funny when Kelsey was talking about having one baby every episode and how many episodes it was going to take to complete the challenge. I'm pretty sure she managed to have twins and triplets at some point, but still managed to have almost 100 episodes. Which begs the question, just how much pointless filler is in this series. We're on episode 18 and you're still explaining the rules in the beginning of the episode. Oh my god, as a viewer hearing the same spiel over and over for 18 episodes has to get annoying. Let's check the viewer interest. Big drop off after she starts explaining the rules and viewers jump to where they can see gameplay. Are we shocked? I guess I'll give Kelsey some credit. It didn't take three minutes to get to actual gameplay. It only took two and a half minutes to get to what people come to watch. Chelsea, what could you do? I don't know what to make her do at this point. So she's just gonna go on a jog. I don't know what to do at this point. Excuse me, Miss Kelsey, your job is to make entertainment for people to watch. Hearing I don't know what to do at minute three of a 36 minute video doesn't exactly instill a lot of interest to watch more of this video. If you are so bored at episode 18 of a 100 baby challenge that you can't think of a single thing to do with your matriarch, you've got some serious boredom issues in your content. Four minutes into this episode and we are stepping away from barely a minute of gameplay to make over a sim. You see all the sims outfits during gameplay. I don't need to watch you painstakingly go through multiple outfits until you find one you like. Looking at viewer interest, it's flat and the lowest the graph goes because people didn't want to watch this. But we all know that most simmers don't look at their viewer graphs, and way less than that even think about how they can improve their content and make their audience happy. Most would rather clickbait or whine that their audience isn't watching instead of understanding why their audience doesn't like their content. Also, I can't help but notice that you've lost about 90% of your audience who started this series at this point, and I wonder why. You lost over 50% of your audience between episode 1 and episode 2, so this is not surprising in the least. Oh my god, Dorian's learning! to dance, look at him go! Ah! In the last two minutes, you've screamed three times and peaked your microphone every single time. Could you not scream and blow out the eardrums of your viewers? I just don't get it. BuzzFeed gets hundreds of millions of dollars in free money from venture capital, plus brings in hundreds of millions of dollars in revenue each year, but they can't afford an audio limiter or to have someone edit the microphone outputs? I would expect this from someone who was just starting out YouTube. Maybe they didn't know how to edit or didn't have the money for a good microphone, not from a company that got listed on the New York Stock Exchange. The rest of this video is just a mess. 
mess. Kelsey sets up a vacation, but doesn't set up the house for the amount of people staying and ends it after 12 in-game hours because her kids were upset without their basic needs being taken care of. What was the point of even including that? Also, you titled this video 20 child reunion, but nowhere near 20 Sims show up for this failed reunion. Wow, I was right on the money with the clickbait comment before I even got to the clickbait part of the video. Then they come home and Kelsey throws a black and white party, which she admits looks more like a funeral because everyone is in mourning. Nothing says fun party like all your Sims crying and sad. Again, doesn't have 20 Sims show up to this party, so you can't say that this part is what pertains to the title. What? <gasps> Oh my god! Are you taking lessons from little Simsy, Kelsey? Ah, oh my god! The amount of people who are so surprised that Sims get eaten by a carnivorous plant they choose to plant on their lot is astounding. It's like leaving Lego all over the floor and being shocked when you step on one. Interest in the reunion part of the video is non-existent and excitement for the black and white party was over in 30 seconds right after the overreaction. I haven't watched a lot of Kelsey's current content, but what I can say is she's doing a fine job emulating all the bad habits she learned at BuzzFeed filler content, clickbait, wasting her audience's time and screaming like the horror community circa 2012. This is the level we're at now, clickbaiting a visual glitch. Surprising no one, people came for the glitch and then left because there wasn't anything interesting in the rest of the episode. I also noticed these little bumps in viewership, strangely happening every five minutes. I wonder what that means. It means that people were skipping forward on the timeline by five minutes at a time, looking for anything interesting to watch. Yeah, that's not a good sign. This leaves large portions of your audience with the thought, why did I even bother? they're watching this, and that's not a good way to keep viewers coming back to your content. And I called the lessons from Little Simsy because she did the exact same clickbaiting the visual glitch thing, so someone is learning from the other, just not sure these are the lessons that should be learned. Yeah, Haley, let's go. Yeah, there you go, now you're done. What is with these weird sound effects? I guess it's supposed to be a triumphant sound effect, but it sounds like there's a rave going on in this video. I've never seen anyone use sound effects like this before, and that's not a compliment. Sound effects are supposed to be used sparingly and to highlight something important. Overuse of them can become extremely annoying to the viewer and cause them to stop watching your videos. Something tells me that watch time is really low on these videos, which tracks with all the dead time and the viewer interest, and someone is trying any anything to keep viewers watching. You know, Kelsey, you could edit your videos better, make them shorter with more succinct content or liven the content up with a story or a purpose for each video so it doesn't feel like deja vu every single episode, but no, it's much easier to just pump the video full of random sound effects and music. I wish I could say I was surprised. From six minutes on, there really is nothing interesting to talk about. First is reading chance cards, then figuring out who is going to go with her to Geek Con, then going to Geek Con, followed by a bunch of back-to-back -to -back toddler birthdays, which if you've seen one, you've seen them all. Put a pin in that and I'll come back to it. Then more skilling, a spooky house makeover, and I kid you not, three minutes in Kaz planning out everyone's Halloween costumes. Again, you see them at the party. You don't need to waste three minutes of a video dressing them. Then it's more skilling, violin this time, more birthdays, and more planning costumes in Kaz. It's been 12 minutes, but this video has felt like an eternity. This is not entertaining. This is a slog. Definitely understanding the dead interest for most of this video. There's just nothing new or interesting to keep people watching. Are we out of clickbait titles already, Kelsey, or are you trying trying some fancy smancy SEO trick to get people to watch this video. Name it after another video and hopefully get the algorithm to push it like that other video. Yeah, unsurprisingly, that didn't work. I was going to watch this episode, but she starts singing multiple times and I just can't. Also, horrible viewer interest graph for this one. I can see that all those sound effects are definitely making it better, not worse. It's New Year's Eve in March. Uh-huh. I don't know if this is anyone else, but I don't want to watch holiday-themed content outside that holiday season. I don't want to see Winterfest in June or multiple times every single year. I'm always surprised by how many people don't bother making up their own holidays. It's constantly the same boring ones over and over. Doesn't that get tiring to watch? I guess this is as good a time as any to talk about the thing I told you to put a pin in. After watching this and other content made by big and small creators, I've noticed a stunning lack of creativity and interesting content coming from the big creators. That makes sense because the big creators don't have to try anymore. They can create The Sims equivalent of watching paint dry and children will watch it and say it's the best thing ever. The only people who would find these videos interesting would be children and teens and that's why this series got so many views at first. From all the things I can see, the low comments and likes, the abysmal watch time, and the only interest being the baby making and the baby having, that all points to this video being on YouTube Kids. The first video didn't get 23 million views because it was a good video. It got those views because it was put in front of a large captive audience of 
children that watch whatever YouTube recommends to them. Most of them are too young to even know how the YouTube Kids app works, and the ones that do know skip forward until they found the parts they wanted to watch. Mystery solved. I think where the 100 Baby Challenge fails for most creators is that no one does anything different. It's just skilling, birthdays, and baby making. You've seen one, you've seen them all. How about you shake it up a little bit? Maybe take the bold step of finding a lot on the gallery and having some birthdays off the home lot. Maybe find a kids park for your children to visit in between making them your servant and chaining them to the skilling items. And maybe, just maybe, don't be in such a hurry. Honestly, I can't remember a single thing that happened in the videos I just watched or anyone's name because there's no reason to. Every day is Groundhog Day and every sim is interchangeable with the next. They are born, aged up, and thrown out within a few episodes, so why care about them or their name? Hunter Baby could be a challenge about family life and what it's like to grow up with a ton of siblings, but as it stands, it's about how fast you can make and discard sims. It's about maxing out skills and popping out babies instead of enjoying the life of your sims, and that's a shame. That's why no one watches more than a handful of episodes. You've sucked all the fun out of the game and turned it into a grind simulator in more ways than one. Final thoughts to anyone who uses this as a not what to do to grow on YouTube tool. Don't walk in the footsteps of everyone else on YouTube. Dare to be different, dare to have fun, and dare to have better content than this.